The Ultimate Factoring Series, Lesson 6a, Trinomials of the Form AX Squared plus BX plus C. This one will be using the Guess and Check method. I need to take a second and explain about Lesson 6. Lesson 6 has three different versions and three different videos. All three videos go over the exact same problems. However, each video does it using a different method. So if you're a person who just likes to see one method, feel free to just watch one video and then move on to lesson seven. Like I said, this will cover the exact same problems in each of the lesson six. There will be a 6A, a 6B, and a 6C. So if you watch the first one, you're like, I totally get that, I like that method, then just move on to lesson seven. But if it doesn't quite click or you're a person who likes to see alternate methods to solve problems, then I'd recommend you watch all three and then decide which method works for you best. So this is called the guess and check method. So the difference between this and what we did in lesson five with when we introduced trinomials is right here. In lesson five we had just x squared out front. In other words, the coefficient in front of x was just one. Well, this time, this lesson, we're going to have other numbers than 1 in front of the x squared. It's still a trinomial, so there's still three terms, and when we have three terms, we know we need to set up the two parentheses and change it to two binomials. Now, before, we knew x squared would always get there from x times x. We knew x times x gave us x squared. So we need to think, what will give us 2x squared? Well, that would just be 2x and x. 2x times x does give me 2x squared, so that works out fine. Keep in mind, it wouldn't be 2 and 2, because 2 times 2 would be 4, and that's not what we want. Uh, you, just so you know, you can put those in either spot. In other words, if you'd rather put the x here and the 2x here, you can feel free to do that. That would be fine. Okay, now here's where the guess and check part comes in. We know... These two numbers right here need to be multiplied to be 15 and add up to negative 11. So we've got to kind of just guess and check. Now it still might be helpful for you to come over here and do the factors of 15. So that at least we know it either is going to be 1 and 15 or 3 and 5. So just for the sake of seeing guess and check, let's try 1 and 15. So we would do 2 times 15 and 1 times x. That gives us 1x and 30x. Now we're still allowed to change the signs, but is there any way that 1x and 30x can add up to 11x? And no, there's not. So that means 15 and 1 clearly can't go where we put them. So that tells me 15 and 1 are no good. So let's just swap it. Maybe they're just in the wrong position. Maybe the 15 needs to go with the 2 and the 1 needs to go with the x. So let's try again. 2 times 1 would be 2x. 15 times x would be 15x. Again, you're allowed to change the signs. If you need to make one of them negative, you can. But is there any way that 15x and 2x would ever combine to make negative 11? No. You know, like I said, 15 plus 2 is obviously 17. But you could do negative 15 plus 2, and that's going to give you negative 13. But that's still not getting us the 11 we need. There's no way to add or subtract 15 and 2 and get an 11. So let's back up. We've tried 15 and 1, and they're not working for us. So let's not use those. Let's try 3 and 5. Okay, let's try them there. 2 times 5 is 10x. 3 times x is 3x. Okay, still no luck. You can get 13 from 3 and 10, or you can get 7 from 3 and 10, but there's no way to get 11. Well, we've only got one option left, so it better be right. And we'll put the 5 here and the 3 here. So 2 times 3 gives me 6x. 5 times x gives me 5x. Ah, now here's something. 5 and 6 can make an 11. So this is good news. Now we need it to be a negative 11x, so we need it to be a negative 5x, meaning I need a negative here, and a negative 6x, meaning I need a negative here. 
So 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And those do add up to negative 11x, which means this is our correct answer. Next up, 4n squared plus 17n plus 15. Okay? So 4n squared. Now, here's the tricky part. 4n squared can be had two different ways. It could be 4n and n, or it could be 2n and 2n. Both will add up to 4n squared. So we have to just guess and check again. So let's just try 4n and n first. Same as before, we know we need these two to multiply to be the 15. So that gives us the option of 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. OK, well, let's think about if we use 1 and 15 first. If I put a 15 here, I'm already thinking there's no way that's a good idea. Because that's going to give me 4 times 15, which is going to be 60. That's going to bring me nowhere close to the 17 I need. So that is not a good idea. Let's not put the 15 there. Let's see if the 15 here is any better. So 15 there, that would give us 4 times 1 is 4n, 15 times n is 15n. That doesn't give us 17. So 15 and 1 don't seem to be a good idea, at least if we have 4n and n. Let's try 3 and 5, see if that works. Um, 3, we'll try it here, and 5, we'll try it here. 4 times 5 is 20n. 3 times n is 3n. Ah, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, we can make a 17 if the 3 is negative, but that's a problem because that would give us a negative 3. We still need this to be positive, and that would be a positive 5. So the problem there is negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, not positive 15. So that's actually not going to work out for us either, which is a bummer. We've got to keep trying. So let's start over. Maybe the 5 here and the 3 here will work out better for us. 4 times 3 is 12n. 5 times n is 5n. Hey, look, another pair that adds up to 17. And this is perfect. 5n plus 12n is 17n. We need them to both be positive, which means they multiply to be the positive 15 we need. So this is, in fact, our correct answer. 4n plus 5 times n plus 3. Again, three terms means you set up the two parentheses. I want to remind you again that it's good to check for a greatest common factor. It's good to check and see if there's something that all three pieces have in common. And so far in this lesson, there haven't been. There's been nothing that all three pieces have in common. Um, so we have 3r squared. The only way to get 3r squared is 3r times r. There's no other combination that makes it. So that's good. We don't have to worry about there being another possibility there. We also need to think about what will multiply to be negative 12. So let's come over here. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So let's start with 1 and 12. So put 1 there and 12 there. Again, 3 times 12 gives us 36. That's way off from negative 16. So it doesn't seem like that's a good idea. Let's try the 12 here and the 1 here. Well, 3 times 1 gives you 3r, 12 times r. OK, that's a no-go. 12r and 3r are never going to add up to 16. So 12 and 1, we can cross off the list. How about 2 and 6? I'll just put 2 here and 6 here. 3 times 6 is 18. 2 times r is 2r. Ah, OK. We may be onto something here, because we can certainly get a 16 from 2 and 18. Well, let's see. If we do a negative 2 and positive 18, that would be a positive 16, so that's not right. We need a positive 2 and a negative 18, so that would be a positive 2 and a negative here, because 3 times negative 6 would give you the negative 18. 
So that appears to check out. 2 times negative 6 does give you negative 12. It adds up to negative 16. So that is our correct answer. 3r plus 2 times r minus 6. Six A squared minus thirteen A plus six. There's three terms, it's a trinomial, so we know to do the two sets of parentheses and change it to two binomials. Six again is kind of like our second example with a four. You can either do a one and a six or a two and a three. In other words, it might be six A and A, or it might be three A and two A. There's no way of really knowing yet, since we're just guessing and checking but we'll try 6a and a to start with. So now we need to figure out what numbers would multiply to be 6. So that can either be 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. So let's start with 1 and 6. Okay, that's not looking good. 6 times 6 is 36. That's way bigger than what we need in the middle. So that's not going to work. Let's try 6 here and 1 here. All right, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times a is 6, and 6 and 6 will never add up to negative 13 no matter what we do. So that means 1 and 6 are not going to work, at least not with 6a and a out front. So let's try 2 and 3. 6 times 3 is 18, 2 times a. Um, 2 and 18, they do not add up to 13, no good. Let's try 3 and 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times a. So 3 and 12 also do not add up to 13. There's no way to add or subtract them to get a negative 13. So this is also not working for us. So we've tried both pairs, and it didn't work. So that tells me that 6a and 1a is not the right combination. Instead, I'll have to try 3a and 2a. So let's start over now. 3a and 2a, maybe 1 and 6 will work. So let's try 1 and 6. 3 times 6 is 18. 1 times 2 is 2. Oops, sorry, I forgot my a's. 2a and 18a. That does not add up to 13. There's no way to make 18 and 2 add or subtract to 13. So that's no good. Let's try switching it, put the 6 here and the 1 here. 3a times 1, 6 times 2a. Still no luck. 12a and 3a do not add up to negative 13. So now we know for sure, because we've tried it all the ways, that 1 and 6 are not going to work for us. So let's try 2 and 3. 3a times 4 is 12a. 2 times 2a. Oh, excuse me. Let me try that again. 2 times 3 is what's supposed to be there, not 4. So three times 3a times 3 is 9a. 2 times 2a is 4a, and I think we finally have a match because we can make a negative 4 and a negative 9 add up to a negative 13. We double check, negative 2 and negative 3 do multiply to be positive 6, so we finally have our correct answer. Okay, this is the last example, and I'm going to try to give you a little bit of a hint as to how you can maybe guess and check uh, with a little better of a guess and check. So, again, we have three terms. It's a trinomial, so we can set up two parentheses. We know the front terms need to multiply to be 35m squared. So that means we have 35m and m, or 7m and 5m, as possibilities. So if you're good with the guess and check method I've been using so far and you just like trying out all the possibilities, great, no problem. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea how you can make that work a little faster for yourself. So 35 times 3, if you actually multiply those two numbers together, you get 105. So 3 times 35 is 105. And if you think about what multiplies to be 105, you're going to get 1 and 105. You're going to get, obviously, 3 and 35, because that's how we got it. Um, 
let's see what else five we'll go into 105 and then seven and 15 and I believe those are all the factors in 105 okay so like I said, this is just a little bit different way to approach guess and check. Notice again, I started by multiplying the first and last number together. The way I'm, I'm showing you right now is still guess and check, but you have to multiply the first and last number together and then look at what multiplies to be that number. So we know now what multiplies to be 105 and we want it to add up to negative 22. Well, that's not a possibility. That's not a possibility and that's not a possibility. So I know that 7 and 15 has to be the correct answer. But because I've multiplied the first and the last number together, I have to keep in mind that these are the result of multiplying these front and last terms together. So the fact that I don't see 35 in either of those two numbers tells me that this is probably not the right option and I should go with the 7m and the 5m. Because since neither of those has a 35, there's no way to be multiplying and get those numbers with a 35. But I do have a 7 and a 15, so I want my outer and my inner to multiply to be 7 and 15. So if I need these two to multiply to be 7, then I would need this to be a 1. If I need this, these two to multiply to be 15, I need this to be a 3. So I need them to add up to a negative 22, meaning they both need to be negative. So I would get 7m minus 3 and 5m minus 1. And negative 3 times negative 1 does multiply to be positive 3. So this works out for me. And that completes the guess and check lesson. Remember, if this worked great for you and you like it, go ahead and move on to lesson 7. If you feel like you need to see another method, then watch lesson 6b or 6c. It'll show you the exact same problems, but using a different method.